Hello everyone, this is Liz, live from the Dairy Public Library on a Monday. Um, today is Director Day, but we're doing something a little different in light of someone who made a massive contribution to film and passed away recently, and I'm talking about composer Ennio Morricone. Um, you have probably heard of him, if you've seen, especially if you've seen a Quentin Tarantino movie, you know who he is. Um, if you've seen a lot of major films, you've seen him. If you're a fan of spaghetti westerns, you've seen him. Um, he has actually over 500 composing credits to his name. And he passed away, um, I think late yesterday, early today at the age of 91. And so I would like to take the opportunity today to go over some of his work and highlight some of his best, um, his best compositions. So we'll just start with some of the basics. He was born November 10th, 1928 in Italy. Um, as I said, over 500 credits as a composer to his name. Um, he worked from like the late 50s or um, early 60s, roughly till the very end of his life. Uh, the man never stopped. Um, he, uh, for when he went to composing, he actually got uh, his start doing background for radio dramas, for Italian radio. And he actually got his start composing in films um, for comedic movies, which is not quite what we know him for now. But he really hit his stride and hit fame with the spaghetti westerns. And what are, you sp what are spaghetti westerns, you ask? Well, these are specifically westerns that were made by Italian directors in the 50s. And we'll go over a few famous ones soon. And he worked with uh, this director called Sergio Leone, which was actually, they were friendly before that. So it was a longstanding, both personal and professional relationship. Um, so his most famous spaghetti Western would be the Dollars Trilogy, which is Fistful of Dollars, A Few Dollars More in the Good, the Bad, and the Ugly. Um, actually, Fistful of Dollars, fun fact, was inspired by the Akira Kurosawa film Yojimbo. Um, so... Kind of nice how the, how we can tie so many different countries of film together. Um, and the theme for The Good, the Bad, and the Ugly was a huge hit. Um, and most people have probably seen Good, the Bad, and the Ugly. Clint Eastwood was in this. Yes, Clint Eastwood, before he became Dirty Harry, got his start in those uh, in the Italian Western world. Um, and this is what really kind of propelled, um, I would say, put Ennio on the map in terms of being a composer, but he always did like, didn't want to be known as being just a Western director. He's like, I do so much more than that. And it's true. He has worked in almost every genre. Um, he's done comedies. He's done drama. He has done some sci-fi. He's done horror. Uh, he worked with Italian horror master Dario Argento a lot. Uh, including for Dario Argento's version of Phantom of the Opera. He also did more like pulp films like Sam Fuller's White Dog, which that is a hard movie to find now. But if you can, Sam Fuller's White Dog is a very timely film. And again, great score. Also, as long as we're talking about pulp, the Jaws ripoff Orca, he did the music for that. Um, I think if, like if you start to dig into a lot of... Um, not just composers, but a lot of people who just do, who aren't actors and directors and like writers, a lot of them will take whatever job is handed to them because they're like, whatever, I need to work or I just like to keep working. Um, so throughout his career, again, his career spans 60 years. He has gotten respect from other directors, other composers, and he's worked with people, Brian De Palma, Oliver Stone. Uh, he's done a lot of Sergio Leone. So people in America, especially I would say film people my age, know him most from his, I don't want to say collaboration with Quentin Tarantino, but from Camp Quentin Tarantino. So Tarantino, I would say love him or hate him, he is someone who understands how music can help elevate and punctuate a film. So he sampled a lot of his works from his spaghetti westerns um, for his own films. So especially if you've seen Inglorious Bastards, he uses a lot of Morricone's work in that. And he also uses some of it in Kill Bill. And this is a personal note. Um, I was getting into film as a teenager and seeing Kill Bill, I already loved it, but I liked the soundtrack. I decided to buy it and realizing a lot of it was score music. I started to kind of realize, hey, wait a minute, I'm listening to the score, but I'm understanding exactly what the scene goes with this. And that was when it clicked to me how important music is for a film and how it's not just background music. It actually helps heighten the scene in many cases. Uh, I think up until that point, I figured the only time music's really important for a movie 
is um, either for special cases like Jaws or Psycho or for musicals. But I don't think I got the overall connection for scores and how they enhance a film. Um, he actually, fun fact, did not win an Oscar for his scores. He was nominated many times, but he got an honorary Oscar in 2007, kind of a, huh, sorry, we didn't give you one. And he finally won his competitive Oscar for best score in 2016 for score to the hateful eight, which was actually, um, the first score he wrote for Quentin Tarantino. There was some misinformation back that, uh, Maura Combs, like, I'm never going to work with him again. Turns out that was just a, uh, a mistranslation, miscontribution. They had a pretty good working relationship, and Tarantino respected the hell out of him. Um, he never really left Rome. He never learned much English. He just kind of was like, nah, if you want to work with me, just we'll deal. Um, and again, he had a work ethic. He had, I think, a great ability to understand the movie he was making. And um, I'll get to that in a moment. So I'm just going to do a rundown of some I think notable scores. Uh, of course, there's some like Cinema Paradiso that everyone's going to talk about, um, The Untouchables, but I want to highlight a few other ones. So there's The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. There's also Once Upon a Time in the West, another spaghetti western. He did the score for Exorcist to The Heretic, which I am going to say, not a great movie, but his score is fantastic and is probably one of the few good things about that movie. Um, Dario Argento film, The Bird of Crystal Plumage, I think is a wonderful score. Days of Heaven by Terrence Malick. And the thing that I like about these, they're all different scores. And again, once it shows that he knows exactly how to compose for a specific film. He's not just, I only do this one specific thing. Um, once Upon a Time in America, he reteamed Sergio Leone. Now that is a, a nearly four hour film that Sergio Leone's like, um, epic film uh, composed for that uh the mission by ronald jaffe who directed the killing field great score um everyone knows the untouchables but i actually think both his score and the overall the movie casualties of war is great uh the hateful eight um he probably is most well-known score from his later years uh i think is fantastic actually fun fact there is some unused fill um unused music that he used for the hateful eight that he didn't use for another movie, which is Jar Carpenter's The Thing. And that is my favorite uh, film score of all time. So if you've seen John Carpenter's The Thing, um, John Carpenter not only wanted a good score, he wanted one that um, gives a feeling of isolation, of paranoia. And Morricone did this weird sort of like a da da pulse. Not quite like the Jaws theme, but very similar to, it's like a heartbeat pulse. And for a film that not only deals with isolation and paranoia, but this weird alien that can infect you and become you and like basically consume you biologically. It's so perfect. I can, it's a haunting score. And I was just thinking today, I'm like, I can't think of any other director who would get that the right way. He actually sent John Carpenter some stuff and John Carpenter sent back like, I want less music and saying I want something that's isolation that's cold that's fear and when he got the music back he's like Morricone despite the language barrier knew exactly what movie I wanted to make and I think that's why he's being eulogized by so many professionals in the industry right now and so many film fans are saying what's my favorite Morricone score uh we're you know we're, de we're we lost an artist but I think a good thing to remember is uh what Hans Zimmer said today when he eulogized him. Hans Zimmer uh, actually said, like, I, the first movie I remember seeing was Once Upon a Time in the West, and that made me want to be a composer. But he said, Ennio Morricone is an icon, and icons never die. And that's so true of film. And that's why film and art are so great, is even when someone dies, their work will live on and be discovered by new generation, uh, new generations. So, um... I guess the only thing I can leave is a, a quote from Morricone himself, why he liked working in cinema, and it's, quote, Working for the cinema has been a precious experience because it gave me the chance to experiment with my ideas and listen to them being performed by an orchestra and then use them for a precise aim. Um, again, I don't think there's much more I can say, but rest in peace, sir, and you may no longer be here, but your art will live on, and hopefully... 
today someone here might go look up a new score or look up a film that he did and discover how great he is. So have a great day and rest in peace, Ennio Morricone.